and we're going to put four four of those in. So I think we just cut those to eight. Because the windows aren't big. Huh? The windows aren't that size, right? No, they're, the windows are six. So by the time you get two feet on each side, we're at ten. So yeah, we needed four ten foot pieces. So I need two. We can cut those in half and use them as our point. Well, we don't use. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so we need, so we need more two pieces. more, two more sticks. Two more. Yeah. Okay, so we are trying to get our rebar reinforcement for all of the lintels. We have all of the windows cut. We still need to come back and uh, put the... Come here, Sage. Sage. <laughs> Sorry, dog distractions. Uh, we still need to get the uh, bucking put on, but we want to make sure that we had all of our rebar where it needs to be above uh, on the lintels and everything. So. Let's uh, come around the, this one first. So this one's gonna be poured into two. I think we've talked about this already. Uh, the lower windows will have a beam of concrete between them and the upper windows. And then the, you can see the cutouts, the bottom of the cutouts for the upper windows, they will actually pour with the second pour. We're pouring this in two stages. Um, and so right here we have four pieces of number six rebar or uh, inch and a half no sorry three quarters of an inch M mental math uh, rebar is measured in eighths and so six number six bar is six eighths and then if you do your fraction simplification that comes down to three quarter so that's three quarter of an inch we're going to build a uh, chair system so that we can get two of those sitting on the plastic tiles like it is now. The other two will be um, two inches, four inches up, sorry, four inches above that. So we'll have two inches of concrete, a bar, four inches of concrete, a bar, two more inches of concrete. That's the goal for our eight inches of actual concrete that we'll have in between there. Um, so, and then we ran those the entire length so that we wouldn't have any seams across these. Uh, it's probably overkill for just that beam because it's not carrying any load, but I'd rather it be over uh, braced than not enough. So in order to get those in, we actually drilled a hole in the outside and fed it through the outside corner. Um, and that was just the easiest way to get it done and not have to worry about it while we were trying to stack the wall. So we're getting ready to throw in the rebar for these. These take two number fives across it. Uh, and so we'll drill a hole in that corner. We could do it from in here, Dan. Would it be easier to do it from the Bobcat from outside or in here off a ladder? Uh, let's do it from the Bobcat outside. Okay. So we'll drill in from that uh, corner right there, feed them through, and then they'll set uh, right up here. So technically we're also going to have our fiberglass rebar that we put all the way around every course. It'll be there too, so it'll just be added strength. 
probably wouldn't have needed to add the other bar, but uh, yeah, like I said, stronger, stronger, better than weaker. Uh, on the three foot windows, we'll do the same thing as far as coming in from the outside, but they only get one number five, which we didn't get enough number five bars, so we're using two number fours, which is equivalent. And so uh, you do the cross-sectional area of your steel, uh, and you can, as long as your cross-sectional area is at or bigger, you can actually drop down in size and use more of them. So two number fours is actually bigger than one number five, so we're, we'll be fine there. Two number fives in this guy, I think we're actually using four number fours instead of two number fives because we didn't, I don't know how I miscounted, but I miscounted on, I got too much number six bar and not enough number five, so it is what it is. That's what we're gonna do there. We'll get all of that in and then we can start uh, bucking out our windows. And it rained this morning, so Carrie's trying to suck up all of the uh, the water off the Avantech to, it says it has a 500 day no sand guarantee. I don't know if I agree with that. You'd have to keep it really dry in order to keep that from happening. But it'll sand and get smooth enough that we can put self leveler and then tile over it. So there we go. This is our two by sixes that we're going to use. We'll have the actual Fox buck, which is two inches of styrofoam. That'll frame out the windows first. That'll go up against the concrete, give us a thermal break. So we have full insulation. And then this is just to frame everything out to hold the weight of the concrete. And then when we pull all of that out, we'll be able to reuse this. So we have two flying, I'm calling them the flying pony walls. Uh, they're little, little walls, my little ponies. My little ponies. Uh, there are two little walls that will go from there to over there up high. And those are gonna be just framed two by six walls with exterior insulation so that they match up to the outside plane of the ICF. Um, and then we'll just reuse that for the, the stud, uh, studs for those walls. Uh, and then those walls will actually be sitting on top of either double or triple LVLs. I can't remember whether they're double or triple LVLs. They don't really carry much weight because they're only carrying that little bit of roof right there. Uh, as soon as you get 16 inches over, you got another eye joist. So that's it. Carrie's telling me to run. Okay, so when we cut out the windows, we were trying to we were trying to cut to where we were having it pull back towards us on this edge, and then when we went to this edge, we were trying to use the top of the bar of the chainsaw so that it pushed all of the, the shavings that way, but that was only partially effective. So as you can see down in here, we have lots of uh, uh, styrofoam sawdust down in there and then it rained and they got water in there and then it all floated to wherever the water pooled. So we are trying to get that out of the, uh, the wall before we put our bucking on and we're ready to put the bucking on so now we're, we're forcing the issue before the water, water dries and everything. So now back over to here and we'll see what we're doing. Okay, so now we have the vacuum in the bottom here, sucking up the water, and Carrie is out there, come on, follow, uh, with a hose, actually washing out the wall, and then sucking it up with the shop back, wet and dry back, so that we can get all of that out of there. So, there we go. And then we have our 
pre-filter so that it keeps a lot of that fire foam out of the, the shop back. So this really helps. I think our bucket is lacking a little bit. <laughs> so here are our Fox Bucks. They have these channels that the concrete actually pours into so that you have you don't have a single plane so that if you did have any wind driven rain it wouldn't have a single plane to go through it would have to go here up over down down over up over down over up over down over up over, okay anyway so we want that groove to go all the way around these are going to sit in here like this so we need to pop this little piece out so that it can go into the groove of the up and down so we just go right Right. 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 On both sides. And this is my Japanese pole saw that I'm pushing. That's styrofoam. Uh, okay. So then that goes right down there like that. Uh -oh, raggy. Do we need to do we need a trim there? Uh, do something. You want the grinder? tell anybody else that is uh, cutting their windows if you can move your window and not screw up your spacing a lot move it back to where you're cutting not in the middle of a fox block and that little bit usually will not be noticed by your window location you might have to adjust both sides so that you're not doing it but going into the middle of these fox blocks and cutting the plastic out like this causes a lot of problems the saw was drifting yeah it's just a pain in the ass so anybody else is doing this if you can shift your window do it bleep. pain in the bleep okay did you bring the thing out with you okay. now we made these to brace the windows um, this will support the concrete as we pour it and then we'll reuse this two by sixes when we frame the other wall. And then we cut one that is just the right size for the inside down there. And then lapped it so that these are actually pulled in a little bit. And that'll let us uh, push it into the window and then we can kick the bottom out. All right, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. 